Hello, and welcome to Zanata Consulting's Beginner Series. This is our fourth in the Zoho Campaigns series. And today we're going to talk about sign-up forms and how to get those set up for your campaigns. I'm Brett Martin. And I'm Tyler Colt. Let's get right to it. So the first thing we have to do is we're going to have to create a list for these sign-up forms to go into. So let's go ahead and create that list. Yeah, so to do that, we'll jump over to contacts on the left-hand side. And then we'll go into manage lists. And so if you've seen our previous uh, couple videos on campaigns, we're using this customer list here. But in this case, you know, if you're using a sign up form on the site, that's probably not how a customer is, you know, going to enter one of these flows. They're going to be in your CRM, right? You're going to have this long history of communication with them. So in this case, we're going to go ahead and do a demo on a newsletter. So we'll go ahead and make a list for a newsletter. We'll give it a name and our little disclaimer. And we can choose if we want to add contacts manually. Um, I don't advise that. You can import contacts directly in from a spreadsheet or sync them from another app like we showed earlier in one of our previous videos. Um, but in this case, we're going to go ahead and use the sign up form. So I'll go ahead and create that now. And when you go ahead and create these, you've got a whole bunch of choices as to what you want to do with your sign up form. So we'll go ahead and we'll give this a name. And then you're going to want to go ahead and choose your template. And you have got a lot of different templates to choose from. So mind you, what this is going to do at the end of the day is give you a little bit of code that you are actually going to give to your web developer and you are going to embed on your website. So you have basic compact forms. This is the first one. This is a standard form. It's static. It is going to be sitting on your web page. Maybe you'll have it over on a sidebar. You have banner forms. And the banner forms are just very small. Maybe you'll put this down in your footer. You'll put it up in your header. And, you know, you really have, you're, you're keeping these, the amount of data you're collecting is kind of based upon the form. So mm -hmm. some people want to get their email, first name, last name. Some people say, just give me your email address. They want to make it as dead simple as possible to get people in. There are a lot of different theories as to, as to what this would look like. So, you know, you're going to choose based upon what you're doing, the information you need to collect for people to get onto your newsletter. And then we've got our pop-up forms. So you've got a standard pop-up, it's just going to kind of show up on the middle of the somewhere, pop into the middle of the screen, uh, not really take up everything, or you can do a blanket. This is basically nobody can see anything. This pops up. It's going to cover the entire screen. Their only choice is to sign up for your newsletter when they look at this form. And then, of course, you've got your library if you have other forms. I'm going to say, let's just take a look at a uh, standard compact form. I think most people like to use these. Um, and then you can uh, just choose any of the templates they have there. You can design them from scratch. You can very much change these once they're done. Um, but, you know, you basically, they're giving you some nice options here. So let's go ahead and use this template. And then here is where you can make all of the changes to it. So if you click into the page body, you can say, what do you want to have here? Do you want to add any fields to this? But you have all the basic fields here. And if you want to go ahead and make some changes to this, you can go ahead and do that and to basically make any changes that you want to this form. Color, setup, the entire thing. Yep, it's all these different options. I mean, kind of similar to editing your templates that you've created to actually send out emails. It's going to be a pretty... Pretty similar little graphical interface here to do that. Um, so you know you might want to change things like the name of any of these headers, or you could actually change the name of the text that you're asking for. So maybe instead of first name, maybe I want full name. I can just ask for that here. I can change the button language. So maybe you want to you know put personalize this a little bit or brand it to your brand colors. So I can change either the text font or the text color, as well as the background color. So maybe we want to do it with a little green to match our header. And then of course, you know, we can kind of change any of the other aspects here. Now, the interesting thing about some of these templates is that, you know, this, for example, here, the whole background includes this image, right? So if you wanted to change this out, you would just change out the image for something with the same aspect ratio and it'll pull that in. Um, so just highlights, it's pretty important to pick the right size template based on the way that you want it to look and feel on the site, uh, just to make sure that you're able to customize it. 
Now for yeah. us, we do most of our work on computers and actually all use MacBooks internally, except for a few holdouts. So that image would actually make sense for us. Um, but you'll just want to make sure that, you know, you change any of these things out to what will make sense for you. So one of the things about that you can't do on this template is you actually can't add any additional fields to it. And if you were to import this into the CRM, what I would recommend is you actually pick a template that has first name, last name. Then it's going to go into the CRM a little more cleanly rather than going in as just a first name or going in as a whole name. Because if when you're going to want this probably to get back into your CRM at the end of the day. So if you're just getting a person's first name, you're going to have to map that to the last name on the field, um, or you're going to have to do some other stuff with that. So when you choose a template, be careful that uh, you're, it has all the basic fields that you need so that you, mm -hmm. can, uh, you can have those properly set up. But in this case, why don't we show a little bit about mapping on this? Yeah. So once you have this set up, you know, any of these fields that you are capturing. So in our case, it's our name field here, and you know, we can actually turn that off and on. Um, then I can choose that this name goes to first or this name goes to last. In this case, we wanted to go to first name as that's what we're asking for here. And then once we have all that completed, we can go ahead and save and proceed. And once you've done that, it basically, you've got a couple of different things here. You've got a sign up form. So if you just wanted to send someone a link, you could actually send them this link and it would take them directly to that form and they would be able to fill that out and go ahead and uh, sign up for your newsletter. So if you wanted to include that, or more than likely, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and put this on your website. And so then you're just gonna go ahead and get the code. And you'll copy this very small bit of script to a clipboard. And it will, that's one way you can give it to your, your website developer. He will know what to do that. He can bet it. You can also get WordPress code. Uh, you can get raw HTML. So if you have a very good website developer, they're gonna want just pure raw HTML code, and they're going to make this look any way you want them to, to make it look. Uh, a lot of different choices here. For some people, they've got maybe older websites, they won't support any of this. For that, you can just get straight iframe code, which is going to allow you to drop this in an iframe on the site. It depends. You'll need to talk to your web developer and see what's the best case, what would they want you to give them so that they can embed this uh, sign up form on your website. Yep. And lastly, just a little note on here, these forms are built to be responsive, meaning adapting the screen size and device. Uh, so just leave this box checked. There's really never a time that you'd wanna make this not responsive. Um, so we'll just always leave this box checked and then you can copy this code and provide it to whoever is gonna drop it onto the website. Now there are a couple more options here, you know, once they actually fill out this form, you know, we can decide where they're gonna be redirected to, um, so you can drop them in on a thank you page or redirect them to a different page of your site, right? There's a couple different options just on what you want to have happen following this form being filled out. And of course, then you have some advanced options we can talk about. Uh, you've got basic tracking. So if you want to add some tracking text to your pages, this will give you some ability to kind of further track the engagement level. Two of the big ones you're going to want to use, though, is push to CRM. And that means it's actually going to add this directly to the CRM or push to a workflow. In one of our previous series, we talked about how to set up a workflow. So you can immediately have this person, let's say this wasn't a newsletter form. This was an inquiry form. Someone basically was, you know, inquiring about a product. Perhaps you have an entire sequence of emails around that product. So you would want to then push them directly into that workflow, maybe have it go out immediately. So a lot of different options here when you set up these forms. One important thing just to make sure on that when you push to workflow is if you already have this list as part of a workflow, then just them being added to this list would have them enter that workflow. So you don't need to do it twice. Um, this is really just in case you want to, you know, add someone to one list and then add them to a workflow that that list isn't uh, intrinsically a part of. And I'll leave you with this because we get asked this a lot before we go, but yes, you have Zoho Forms as well. And oftentimes people want to use Zoho Forms, push those people into their CRM first, then based upon 
how they're set up in the CRM, then automatically instant sync them with the listing campaigns. You can accomplish the same thing that way as well. There are a lot of different ways that you can do this. Um, sometimes I find Zoho Forms may be a little more powerful, but it doesn't really allow you to do the nice little pop-up windows and all those kind of things on your website. So you've got some choices when you're doing this, but it's a pretty powerful tool inside Zoho Campaigns. And that's our tutorial on how to set up sign-up forms inside of Zoho Campaigns. Thanks for joining us. Thank <laughs> you.